Welcome guys to a new video. So if you click this video, you know from the title that nope, this is not going to be successful. However, I still think that this is quite interesting. This is the Core 2 Quad Extreme Edition. So the model being the QX 6850. Now, the whole reason I attempted this endeavor um, was that I was noticing while trying to overclock this the temperatures were getting quite high, approaching 100 degrees Celsius. So in my stupidity, I thought that deleting and replacing the thermal paste with liquid metal would be the solution. Okay, <clears throat> so this is the Rocket Cool Delete tool for LGA 1150 CPUs. Well, it looks like it fits okay. However, it's hard to notice on camera, but I think the PCB of this CPU is a bit too thick. Yeah, it is a little bit too thick. Oops. Mm, this might be soldered on. Let's see what I've done. Okay guys, so I've got um, actually really bad news. I think I've probably permanently damaged uh, the CPU, which isn't a big deal. It's um, a very old, quite cheap, and not much value in this. So it's good for practice. Um, so this ended up being soldered. There was no thermal paste under the heat spreader. I didn't show you on camera, but what I've done is um, Gently scrape off the solder with a scalpel blade. The problem is not the die. The die looks fine. The problem is because this PCB was a little bit um, too tall for this um, LGA 1150 deleting tool. Um, the metal um, block that pushes against the um, heat spreader to pry this off has scraped the PCB. Might not be able to see it but here and here. So I think I've cut through quite a few traces. Whatever the case, we're gonna see if it works. I'm not gonna put it into the original motherboard. Um, might blow it up. I might put it into a disposable one just to see if this thing boots. This is the um, 
heat spreader. As you can see, I've scraped off the old solder with my scalpel blade. Because this was soldered, I had to use so much force that I've actually warped this heat spreader. Let me see if I can show you. So guys, this is how the um, CPU looks like once we've deleted it. Now I'll show you exactly what's happened and why this isn't working. So you see here and here we have our two dies. I'm guessing that um, each die has two cores on it. Correct me if I'm wrong. We've got a line of surface mount devices here, capacitors or um, voltage regulators, I'm not sure what these are. Now you'll notice that the surface looks a bit scratched up um, and that's because I've actually had to remove the solder off this by scraping it gently with a blade. So if you watch the video you'll see which blade I used. So I scraped it basically like that. Now look, the surprising thing is that this silicon die is actually quite hard. Um, it's actually quite difficult to uh, chip and break this. So I don't think I've actually damaged the die. What I think has happened is um, during the delete process, I've scratched some of the traces of the PCB. So you can see here and here, how I've scratched the PCB. Now if I rotate this, here as well, I've scratched the PCB. These other areas, these are just uh, silicon residue from the glue that was used to keep the integrated heat spreader onto this PCB. So guys, what can I do with this CPU? Um, it no longer works, you've seen that happen. I have a really cool idea. This is directly inspired by a video I've seen by Debar. What I want to do is gently sand down the CPU to remove layers of the silicon dies. And what I understand is uh, if you do that uh, for long enough, you'll start to actually see the transistor structures underneath. So that's going to be pretty cool. So stay tuned for that video.